do not consider the left or the right or this or that or that which is said on the news or the media, but look to me, says the Lord. Look to me, for I am moving. I am moving in even that which you cannot see, even that which you do not know. I am moving in the hearts of the multitude. I am moving in the hearts of the many. For I will draw many to me, says the Lord, in this day and in this season. It will be a great day of reaping and a great day of harvest. It will be a great day of fruitfulness, says the Lord. For I have I not said it from beforehand? Have I not promised you? Have I not told you? Have I not led you into this place, says the Lord? For though it may look like this and it may look like that and it may look like a, a, a dry season and it may look desert and it may look like there is, there is not much, but yet I will bring forth streams in the desert, says the Lord. I will bring forth a, an abundance. I will bring forth a great flowering with my stream. I will bring forth that which you, which you have desired and that which you have sought. I shall answer, says the Lord. I shall bring it forth and I shall bring it forth abundantly for I am the God who moves and does that which is impossible. I am that which is, is above and beyond that which you ask or think, says the Lord. I shall do it because it is by my spirit, not by the hand of man, says the Lord. I will do that which I have promised and I will bring it to pass. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You're the great encourager. We worship you, we worship you. Jesus, we love you. We love you, we love you. Uh, this morning I want to share from um, Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 6. Um, I won't read it because I've left my glasses somewhere, so I won't be able to read from the word. But anyway, it's the story of Zacchaeus. Um, as Jesus was leaving Jericho, he, um, he, was walking, he was walking past, and obviously there's lots of people following Jesus wherever he goes, as we know. And... Um, and Zacchaeus hears of this. He's a, he's a tax collector. He's a chief tax collector and he rips people off all the time. Okay. However, Zacchaeus um, hears that Jesus is coming, but he's very short in stature. So he decides to climb uh, a sycamore tree. So he goes ahead of the crowd, climbs a tree, and makes himself available to see who this Jesus is. So he climbs a tree and then the throng are walking past and Jesus is there and he looks up and he says, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house tonight. Come on down from the tree. And it was sort of like the Zacchaeus jumped down with joy. He was so thrilled. I think he got more than he bargained for, actually. He just wanted to catch a glimpse of who this Jesus was. However, he, he came down with joy, and it was sort of like Jesus touched his heart. He was a changed person from the time he got from the, from the branch down to the ground when Jesus says, I want you to come, you know, I want to come to your house. Well, the message that I have is that you know Zacchaeus positioned himself to see Jesus. He put himself in a place where he was above other people. He made he made haste. He went ahead. He planned to see the Lord. But the Lord is so gracious and so wonderful that Zacchaeus just didn't get just to see Jesus. But Jesus touched his heart and changed him. And he you know he even went to the point where he said, "Look, I'm going to give back double." for those that, you know, I've taken from. And I'm also going to repay fourfold to those that I've taken from, you know. It's just incredible, incredible conviction of his sin, but such incredible repentance. And that's what Jesus does for us. He brings us into a place of wholeness. He brings us into a place of purity. He brings us into a place where we just want to turn from our wicked ways and just lay ourselves at his feet. You know, and I was thinking about how Jesus positioned himself on the cross. And the, and, the, and the people who were, who were crucifying thought, you know, well, we've done this thing, we've got rid of him. But Jesus is so much more than that. Jesus gave us more than what those people bargained for. He's given us eternal life. He's given us a way to have this wholeness and this fullness in him in heaven. He's given us this way so we can have a walk with Jesus now in this, in this earth where we are now. He's given us the opportunity through the shed blood of Jesus, that we can have our sins wiped, gone completely, where we can come into the presence of God, where we can come with a clean slate and know that he loves us and he's forgiven us. So I just want to just make a note, you know, that, that we position ourselves in front of Jesus, but Jesus has gone before us and positioned himself on the cross for us. It's an incredible thing that he's done, and it's so much more than what the other people even expected. They thought they were getting rid of a rabble rouser and a and a problem person, you know? But how much incredibly more is God who makes this provision for us? So as we take our emblems today, I just want to just pray. Lord, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for your blood, Lord Jesus, because, Lord, your, your blood has just covered our sin. It's taken our sins away. 
Lord, I thank you that we can come forward into your presence now in purity, with a clean slate, knowing, Lord, that there is nothing that's going to separate us from your love. There's nothing that can take away that opportunity for us, Lord, to have a full-on relationship with you. Lord, where we invite you into our life, Lord, we invite you into our heart. And Lord Jesus, because of what you've done and our faith in you, you just come. Lord, you just come into our life and you just transform our lives with spiritual power, Lord God. You transform our lives into a life like Zacchaeus where he was just so full of joy. You know, he could have been feeling really guilty. He was so full of joy, Lord, when he saw you. He jumped down from that tree and he was a changed person, Lord God. He became an honest man. Lord, that's what you do to us, Lord. You transform us from the inside out. So, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that as we take um, this, this cup, which represents the blood, which is, is for the remission of our sins, Lord God, we thank you for it, Lord. I'm doing this in reverse order, but that's okay. So, Lord, as we drink today, Lord, we just think of your blood, Lord, that it just brings us into that wholeness with you. And Lord, <laughs> the biscuit, Lord, the bread. Lord, you are the bread of life, Lord. But we know that this represents so much more, Lord. This represents your body that was broken and bruised and battered, Lord, on the cross. That, Lord, when you were on the cross, you didn't even look like a person. You were so, you were so disfigured, Lord. But, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that because of the, the lashes that you received, Lord, that we have healing in our bodies. Lord, that you did everything that needed to be done, Lord, so that we could come to you. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that by your stripes we are healed. And we thank you, Lord, for your broken body. So, Lord, as we, as we eat today, Lord, we remember that as well. Thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, I just praise you. <laughs> I praise you, Lord. You're so wonderful. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you're a transformer of lives. Lord, that you've taken us from this, this place of, I don't know, darkness into your glorious light. And I thank you, Lord, that life is just one big adventure with you, but it's all because of what you've done on the cross, Lord, that you've made a way for us. So, Lord, we pray you and we thank you mightily. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> of a risen God. Death couldn't hold him. Could not hold him. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. We've got a few things happening this week. We're going to have a prayer meeting on Tuesday night. We'll be praying. Now's a bit good time to pray, don't you think? <laughs> I think it's a good time to pray. Good time to press into Almighty God. On on Friday and Saturday, so my friend Mark Heenan will be having some miracle encounter meetings in Gympie, one college road south side. I hope it hasn't got flooded and washed away. But it's at a, it's a Christian Kalula Christian school, I think it is. One college road, Gympie. There are some flies down the back. Uh, Mark just has an outstanding testimony with the miracle power of God. He had a he doesn't like telling his own testimony much. Because he sees so many powerful miracles from what he has walked through. He had a tumour the size of a football in his stomach, uh, stage 4 cancer, and uh, just walked the journey and believed God to be healed. And he's just got some incredible faith built in his life. He's now totally cancer free, and he sees just incredible miracles. And uh, so if you want to go and see God move in power and the miracle power of God, it's on Gimpy, 6 p.m. this Friday and Saturday, the 14th and 15th. And uh, there are some flies down there if you want to go to that. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to take our tithes and offerings and honour God with our finances. You know, the, the Bible says that uh, to bring our tithes, the tenth of our increase is something that honours God and is an act of worship towards God. So we have uh, able to do that online or we can, we're going to take up that offering now. Father, we thank you for your provision. We thank you for making way for us. We thank you and we honour you in Jesus' name. Marvellous name. Amen and amen. Okay, we'll just wait for that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
probably got two thirds of our people away today, and uh, for various reasons. I don't know if you, any of you have been watching the news, but there's a bit going on. I was very encouraged to hear from God this morning saying, don't look to the left or the right, don't look at what's happening, but look to him. And I believe that is the word for the day. We must look to God. We must walk with him. We must press into the spirit. We must be people who carry his presence. And this is a dear friends of ours, Frank and Linda Dunlop. Uh, Linda, on the, I think it was Wednesday, the 7th, passed away in a sleep this week. And uh, I think she had COVID. I think she had COVID. And uh, Frank is now on a ventilator in hospital. So we'd just appreciate if we can pray for him. Why don't we pray for him right now? Father, we lift Frank to you and we believe your mighty hand upon him. Father, he's a man of faith. We release your healing power to him right now in Jesus' name. Let your power flow. Let your power flow. Let your power flow through his lungs. Let your power flow through his body. Let him be healed and made whole. Father, we pray for, for Mark. We pray for his family, for your grace and your comfort to be with them. Walk with them, Jesus. Walk with them. Walk with them. We pray for the rest of the church family, who are close friends. Pray for your grace, your fellowship, for the comfort of the Holy Ghost. My God, we look to you at this season. We look to you. We thank you, we thank you, we honour you. In Jesus' marvellous name. And uh, I'll be notified in the coming days when the funeral will be. I haven't got any more information. Mark posted something on Facebook with that. And uh, we'll probably share that on the, on the Global Care, um, Global Connections page, sorry. I, I just want to say in this season that it's so important that we keep our hearts. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. It's so important that we, we keep sure the foundation of our faith in Christ. It's so important. You know, when the pressure's on, that's when we find out what's really in us. Hello? When we get, when we get pressured, when things happen. And it's a precious season right now for the whole world. It's a precious season when, you know, this, this thing is just influencing so many. And, uh, but God has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. And it's so important that we keep the foundations of our faith. Jesus said, if you believe in me, though you are dead, yet shall you live. We have an eternity with Jesus. Colossians 3 says, keep your mind on things above. We must keep focus on our eternity and our relationship with Christ. Not just when we pass from this life, but when we receive Christ into our lives, when we acknowledge him as our Lord and Saviour, when we acknowledge what Jesus did on the cross, that he paid for our sin, he paid for our separation from God, and we receive him as our Lord, we believe him, something divine happens on the inside of us, we get born of the Spirit, we get born of God, we come alive to him, our eternity begins the day we receive Christ. Something powerful happens, the Bible says it's called being born again. When we are born of his Spirit, we come alive to God and the life of God begins to flow. Something, something supernatural happens on the inside. When I received Christ, it was like the, the sky was bluer and the grass was greener and I saw the miracle power of God, friends of mine being healed right in front of me and I said, God, you're real and said, I'm in. And so I gave my life to Christ and I entered into this relationship with the living God and until you do that, it's like you can hear about it, but you don't really know. But when you receive him, something divine happens and you enter into a relationship with the living God. And it's like any relationship, you've got to spend time at it. You can't just do it and say, okay, I did that and get on and do everything else. It's a relationship. It's a relationship that requires communication. It's called prayer. It's a relationship that requires spending time in his presence. It's a relationship that requires that two-way communication where God speaks to us and we speak to him. 
It's, it's keeping our heart right. And so we've got to deal with the things that impact on that relationship. We've got to deal with the, the stuff that takes us out. We've got to deal with anger and bitterness. We've got to deal with the unforgiveness. We've got to deal with the hardness that gets around about us because of the difficulties of life. Nobody here's had any difficulties. You're all doing great. Everybody's wonderful. <laughs> Romans 15, verse 18 says this. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. 13. Romans 15. 13. Can you bring that one up? I'll read it from the Bible. Not verse 18. 13. My apologies for giving you the wrong one. 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God is a God of hope. Hope is a confident expectation that good is coming and it fills us with joy and peace. It fills us with joy and peace in believing. But this is what happens. What happens is if we lose hope, if we lose hope that good is coming, we lose our joy and we lose our peace. We lose something when our believing gets out of whack. Does that make sense? When our believing, when we believe wrongly, we lose joy and peace. Why do you think it is that God is telling us, don't look at this, don't look at that? We lose hope, we lose joy and peace. He is the Prince of Peace. He gives us peace that passes understanding. Why? Because it doesn't make sense. It's the peace of the Spirit. It's the life of God. It's something that transcends natural circumstances. When peace gets in our heart, then peace happens on the outside. Jesus was in a boat asleep in the middle of a storm. I don't know, any of you have been in a storm in a boat? We went on a cruise once and a, there was a bit of a big sea came along. How many decks was on that cruise ship? 11 or 12 or something or other. And they closed up to deck 7 because the seas were so big they were washing over the, you know, in, onto the balconies and things on the outside of that cruise ship. It was a big sea. You think seven stories high? That's a big sea. And the ship was rocking around like this and like that. And, you know, uh, you're trying to eat your dinner and you had to follow it around the table a little. <laughs> Jesus was asleep in a boat in a storm. And some people say, well, he must have been really tired. Well, it usually happens the reason you sleep is because you're tired. But Jesus could sleep in the storm because he had peace in his inner world. And his inner world was greater than the outer world. And we've got to be the same. We've got to have peace in our inner life that is greater than our outer circumstance. When you have peace in your inner life, then you can be like Jesus when the disciples woke him up and said, Master, don't you care that we are perishing? He wasn't perishing, he was resting. Because he was at rest in here. And when you can be at rest in your inner life, in the midst of the outer storm, then you can have the authority to speak to the storm. And Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves, and the wind and the waves stopped. But you can only do it when you have peace on the inside first. This is making sense. The God of hope fills us with joy and peace in believing when our believing is right, when we're believing what the Word of God says, then in that place of peace we can speak to the storm. Well, this is just the Word of God. This is our Saviour. This is Jesus. It's the one whom we love and serve. And we are supposed to be His ambassadors, His co-laborers. We are His representatives. He's called us to walk on this earth like he did. To speak to the storm.
We've got to keep our believing right. When we're on holidays, we just had a little vacation, went down to visit family, really, because it was the first opportunity we had. We had a whole bunch of family down in New South Wales. So we had a new grandson down in Orange, fantastic time, went and saw our new grandson, spent time with, with Deb's son and his wife, and lovely, a few days there. Then we decided to go and visit my dad, who's a Cunabarabran. So we took a little back road, you know, going up the, uh, um, you know, out through the central west there, and we're driving along this back road, we hit a bump, and my car just stopped. So we, we coast and roll over to the side of the road, which is in the middle of the day, we ring up RACQ, fortunately we had phone reception, and we ring up and say, our car stopped, can you come and help? We paid this thing, that's what you're supposed to do. And so we were so far from anywhere. They sent out uh, an NRMA man who they're associated with. He came an hour and a half later and uh, came and, you know, checked out the car. Couldn't find anything wrong with the car. What's going wrong with it? And I uh, said, look, you're probably going to have to get a tow. The nearest Nissan dealer is back in Dubbo. Of course, this is a public holiday. So we ring up the RACQ people again. Hey, look, they can't find anything wrong with the car. We need a tow. Okay, there's five tow people in Dubbo. We'll ring them up. She rang every one of them. Not one of them wanted to come out. So, okay. She got back onto this NRMA fellow from Dunny Doo. The Dunny Doo NRMA man. He had a tow truck. So he came. 7 o'clock that night. So we were on the side of the road for seven hours, just enjoying, you know, our holiday and our little break in the country, having a great time. And uh, seven hours later, he came and got us. But because of the mask mandate, we were not allowed to travel in the tow truck. This mask mandate. It's like going out for dinner with the Lone Ranger. The mask mandate. Eddie likes it. <laughs> so they sent a taxi. And that just chewed up all of our benefits. So $500 taxi ride later, they get us to Dubbo. And because it was the Dunny Doo man with the picked up the car, the car was still in Dunny Doo. So we had to find a motel for the night. We got a motel, this is fantastic. And uh, uh, wait for the car to come the next day. So the car came the next day, RACQ paid for that, fortunately, and uh, took it to the Nissan dealership. Nissan dealership says, our mechanic's still on holiday. I said, can you get somebody to look at it? Oh, we'll see if the Mazda fellow can look at it. He looked at it and wasn't interested. And so we went back to the motel and said, we've got, got to pay for one more night. And so we got a mechanic to look at it, said, can't help it, and, you know, still got to wait another day. So we went back to the motel. We've got to pay for one more night. Four times we had to do that. Four nights we spent in Dubbo <laughs> until this fellow came back. So this, this mechanic came back, put the thing on it. Oh, you've blown a fuse. I'm thinking, what does it take? I don't know. And so, you know, they fixed the fuse $400 later and uh, we got our car going and uh, we spent New Year's Eve in Dubbo, watched the Dubbo fireworks. You might have seen a little post we put up on the, on the Global Connections page for that. And, uh, but here we are just enjoying our holiday. We saw this little post that says, you know, have a Central West destination holiday. I said, that's us. Totally derailed our plans. We are going down to, from there we'll go to visit my sister down in Taree and Deb's mum's in a nursing home Taree so that really worked out well. My sister rings up and says, I've had my son-in-law visiting, he's got COVID. So we've got to isolate for seven days. So we can't visit her. If we had have gone down there and the car had have worked, we would probably still be stuck there. So we, we don't go and visit her. And then I we'll thought, well, we'll drop in and see Deb's mum in the nursing home. The nursing home sends Deb a message saying, there's a gastro outbreak in the nursing home. We're locked down. You can't visit. 
So I, I don't know when we're going to see her again. We may not. She's, she's dead and on. That's a, one of the points of us going down there. So we thought, okay, we can't go and visit her. Let's go to the next destination. We'll visit Deb's sister in Port Macquarie. We go to Deb's sister in Port Macquarie. She's so unwell, we have to put her in hospital. Keep your heart with diligence. We've got to be diligent to stay in a place of faith regardless of the external circumstances. To keep peace in our heart regardless of the storm. So we put her in the hospital, she pulls herself out, and we come home, and next day she's back in again. And we get up to, to Brisbane, follow up for lunch in Brisbane, and Deb gets a message, oh, the nursing home's out of lockdown now. So we, we miss that opportunity. Keep your heart with diligence. Let the God of hope fill you with joy and peace and believing. Friends, it matters when you live it. It's not just about when you come to church. This stuff matters in your day-to-day -day life. It matters when you're on vacation. It matters in your workplace. It matters in your relationship. It matters where we live that the God of peace will fill us with joy and peace in believing. Hello? Hello, Deb and I were still smiling. People say, you have a great vacation? I said, well, it was interesting. It was interesting. We, we did get a break. But God is good. Here's the thing. Romans 8.28 says, All things work together for good that for, for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. But sometimes we think that all things are good. But that's not what the Bible says. Not all things are good. If we think all things are good, then we will just enter into this passive, uh, standing back, I don't have to do anything because all things are good. It's all good. But that's not what occurred. It wasn't good that a broken fuse cost us $400. It wasn't good that we had to pay four nights accommodation in a place we didn't really want to go to. It wasn't that, that, I wouldn't have called that good. But we made the best of it. All things work together for good. For those people who are, love God and are called according to his purpose, God will make his purpose, regardless of circumstances, come to pass. That's what the verse says. But not all things are good. If we accept that all things are good, we become passive. James 4, verse 7 says, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And I believe this is the key verse that God is giving us today. We must resist the devil. We must resist. We must stand up and be people of faith and resist the devil. How do we resist the devil? How do you know it's the devil? I was riding my e-bike the other day because I was <clears throat> missing that, you know, going for a bit of exercise. And I'm, and I'm riding my e-bike and all of a sudden it just stops. Just like my car. So I started up again and I'm riding along and going up a hill. And it gives me a little bit of help going up the hill. It just stops again. And every 50 metres, this thing just stops. I think, what's going on? So I've got it at home. I'm going to look at it. I'm thinking, what's going on? My car just stopped. Now my bike just stopped. I'm at home typing up this message, believing God. You know, God, what do you want to say? And I believe, you know, this is where God has got us. So we must stand strong on our foundations of faith and believe what he says and not what the circumstances are saying and believe him and walk in faith and let peace and joy be our inner state rather than reacting in fear. I believe God wants to break fear. So I'm typing up this message and <clears throat> I come back and I'm ready to type it out, print it out and my laptop just stops. And I can't get it started again. So I think, what's going on here? Well, I'm full of joy and peace. I'm believing God. Then we get the message about Flinda. Okay. God, this is serious. This is serious, this is serious business. 
in much of this. What happens is that there are a couple of things that stop us from resisting. One is the thought that all things are good and it's just the will of God. But that's not so. Not everything is the will of God. God's will is that all men be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth and yet we know that that doesn't happen. Jesus came to manifest the wisdom of God and to destroy the works of devil. When he rose again, he commissioned us to do the same. To make known the manifest wisdom of God to principalities and powers and destroy the works of the devil. But somehow we know that all the works of the devil, there are, there are still some things unchallenged. We must resist the devil. We must resist. A plague is not from God. We must resist. Jesus healed everyone. There was no theology in the Bible for us to accept sickness. None. None. Jesus healed everyone. So we must resist. We stand in faith. By his stripes we are healed. I became a Christian because I saw the miracle power of God and people getting healed. I've got a friend who walks in that very, very powerful. I've experienced so many miracles from God myself. Healing from, from you know, instantly healing my broken ribs when I fell off my motorbike, just uh, you know, healing me of this and that. I've seen so many miracles. I, I can't remember them all. Seen the power of God at work. We must resist. We must resist the devil. We've got something that's impacting on the whole world. One of Mark's uh, uh, testimonies is he had a family that ha all had COVID symptoms and he believed God for them and the whole family, all the symptoms instantly disappeared. We must resist. Resist the devil. We must stand in faith. The Bible says, if we believe in him, Though we were dead, yet shall we live. Linda was such a lovely lady and she loved the presence of God and at times she would burst forth into praise and just, you know, oh, God's here. Oh, I love it so much. Do you remember that? Remember for Linda doing that? She loved the presence of God. Now she stepped into that eternal place where she's rejoicing in the presence of God. <laughs> That's an eternal perspective. But that doesn't mean that we should not resist and just allow that to happen. We should resist. Are you hearing me today, friends? This is the word that God has given us. Resist the devil and he will flee. We must stand in faith. We must walk with him. We must allow faith, hope and joy and peace to fill our inner life where we walk through it where we speak life and life more abundantly and be a, a representative of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And to speak. It's so easy to criticize. It's easy to be judgmental. It's easy to step back into the flesh and just come under it. It's easy to let fear get around about us and stop it. It's easy. But we're not called to be easy. We're called to be people of the Spirit. Stand up and bring the life of the Spirit and bring the answers of God and speak life. When we were down visiting uh, Ed's son's wife and his family and we saw our little grandson, lovely little boy, but man, he would not stop crying. We were there for three days and he cried for three days non-stop. And, uh, uh, you know, he was outside of his home and outside of his environment. He's only six weeks old and all these... Well-meaning ladies, you know, like we do, uh, you know, would go up and give her advice. This is what you should do. Do this, do that, do something else. And I thought, man, this poor lady's feeling the pressure because the child is just distressed for whatever reason. When they're that age, you don't know. And so uh, uh, I said to her, you're a good mum. 
That's what she was, being a good mum. She didn't get upset, didn't get distressed, she just did her best. She was being a good mum. And you know, she's almost broken with tears. So she's had so many people just telling her what to do. So the next day I just said to her, you are a good mum. And again, she just had this emotional response. See, we can speak words of life or we can just get so critical. The third day, on our last day, I said to her, you know, you're a good mum because your child, you know, he is being difficult, but yet you're still being so good with him. It would be easy if the child was totally placid and peaceful and didn't get upset to the say she was a good mum. When he was being difficult, that's when it mattered. So we can speak words of life, we can encourage, we can build up, or we can, you know, just point the finger all the time. It's so easy to do that. We've got to be carriers, representatives of Christ, bringing the life of God, bringing the answers of God, letting, letting the, the joy and the peace and the liberty that's in our inner life flow to those that are around about us. Speaking life and life more abundantly. Hello? You with me this morning? <laughs> Ephesians 4.29 says, Let nothing proceed out of your mouth except that which ministers grace to the hearer. Impart grace. Be a person who imparts the life of Jesus. <laughs> After the Holy Ghost comes upon you, we shall receive power. We have the same Spirit of God within us. We've received Christ. We've received a new nature when we receive Him. We're born again. But Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says, after we receive the Holy Ghost, we receive His power. We receive the Spirit of God comes upon us and empowers us. So we can walk in power. We can walk in that same Spirit that Jesus walked in, ministering life, ministering truth. Jesus said in John, He says, when the Spirit of truth comes, He'll lead you into all truth. He will be the comforter. He will be the, the one who will hold you and carry you. That same Spirit comes and empowers us and gives us His wisdom, gives us His leading. The first thing that the Holy Ghost did when He filled Jesus, you remember? Jesus was baptized, if you've read this story. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. He came up out of the water and the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove came upon Jesus. And then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He was led into 40 days of fasting and he was tempted by the devil. And in that place, Jesus took authority over the devil and he won the victory. Friend, Jesus is in us. That same Jesus who took absolute authority over the devil lives in you and I if you've received him. When we resist the devil, he will flee because it's that same Jesus in us who has already defeated the devil. Christ in me is the hope of glory. He's in me. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall make alive my mortal body. That same spirit that raised Jesus is well able to raise me. He's well able to raise you. It's the same spirit. The Holy Ghost can lift us up just like he did with Jesus. And I've seen it. I've met people that have been raised from the dead. I've seen the power of God flow. He works here in this place. God is with us. We've got to keep focus on him and allow his truth to be our rock, our foundation in this season when everything is just looks so difficult from the external. Are you hearing me? Come on. Let's not lose our faith. We must, we must keep our sure foundation that God is with us. God is with you. He has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. He is the same spirit who makes that difference. He is the same one. He, he, he comes and helps us. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, I think it is, that God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And I found in my walk with God that often it's just the daily discipline. 
to resist the devil, to overcome, to walk with God. It's the daily disciplines that we must keep. The daily disciplines are what carry us through these difficult times. It's the daily disciplines of reading my Bible. It's the daily discipline of spending time in prayer. It's the daily discipline of renewing my mind, of bringing every thought captive, of bringing those thoughts of fear. When we hear about somebody, you know, being hammered by this disease, I've got to bring those fear thoughts back captive. I'm not going to allow fear to rule. I'm going to cast down those thoughts. When I have thoughts of shame, condemnation, lack of self-worth, they are totally against the knowledge of Christ. Bring those thoughts captive. Hello? Maybe I'm the only one who gets to this stuff. Bring those thoughts captive. You watch the news. These many cases and that's the problem and everybody's, you know, don't do this and something else and, and fear and bad and horrible. And bring those thoughts captive. Bring them captive. Hold on to them. Don't let them rule you. Allow the Word of God to be the foundation. The Word of God does not change. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. He inspired this thing. He is the God above all God. He is our our Saviour, He is the, the one who has all authority in heaven and earth and He has empowered us with it. Resist the devil and he will flee. Let joy and peace come out of your inner life and speak peace to the, to the waters around about you. That's what we should do. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Spirit of God. If you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, if you want to ask Him into your world, if you want to know the reality of walking with Jesus, I'd love to pray with you. Quickly put up your hand. Who's that? If you're like that and you would like to, you want to know Jesus, I'd love to pray with you. Quickly. Give me a wave. You would like to do that? Good on you, champ. I was wondering, could I pray with you? Could I lead you through a prayer? Come on. Would you come down here? Good on you, man. You want to come with him, Alex? Okay, so we're going to talk to God, and he's going to hear you. And we're going to just believe God to make a difference here. So just say these words after me, but we're talking to God. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you took my sin. I believe you rose again. I ask you to come into my life. Be my Lord and Saviour. Forgive me for my sin. Let me be born into your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you want prayer for anything, I'd, I'd just love to pray for you and believe God and release His power to you. Because God is a healer. I encourage you this week, if you can. Come to the prayer meeting. Saturday, Friday and Saturday, miracle meeting up in Gympie with Mark Heeman. It's going to be an outstanding time. We're going to believe God. We're going to believe and see mighty, mighty miracles. It's going to be very good. Always has been. Every meeting I've seen, multiple, multiple miracles. And so uh, it's going to be good. God bless you. I really do just appreciate you so much for coming out today. You know, there are, there are many that, uh, you know, for one reason or another, doing the, whatever they're doing, there's no judgment or criticism here. Uh, but it is what it is. If things do constrict significantly and they put us into a, a lockdown or something or other, we'll be posting online messages. We'll put stuff on the Facebook connections page. Until I get a laptop, I can't send out emails. Um, but we'll be doing something. Hello. So stay connected with the, with the Global Connections Facebook page where we post all that stuff and Instagram and all those sort of things. If you don't know where that is, you know, have a chat with Deb or somebody rather. If you can't do that, you know, our phone number, you don't even, aren't even able to print off newsletters. Uh, but you can go to the website. So look up the website. My phone number's on the website. Please call if you need prayer. 
Uh, please, you know, we can pass uh, our prayer requests onto our prayer team and stand in faith and agreement together. Amen? So we're not even having a coffee today. We haven't got that going either. But uh, we're just rolling as best we can and smiling in the midst of it. Hello? People full of joy and peace. God bless you. Have a fantastic week.